welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to learn about how can we send signals from hardwares to Android things. This example is called button example that's from their website. Basically what it does is when we send an electricity signal to the input on the Android things and it will actually send an output to turn on this LED light. Let's get it started. What you need will be two resistors. They are 330 ohms. It did not specify them on the Git project, but that's what I'm using and it works. And then we of course need a LED light. The longer one is the positive side. And then of course we need jumper wires. What I'm using is the male to female jumper wires. Last but not least is the push button, the four pin push button. It, it's not that straightforward, at least I got really confused with this kind of push button. Of course, here it comes with a multimeter, which will help us understand how this button actually works. So you can actually just turn your multimeter. Every multimeter has this feature. It's a little speaker icon. It's here, like so, when you turn it here. What it does is, if it makes a connection, your multimeter will beep. You will probably heard this before when electrician working at your house or something. Basically, that's what it is. So let's try it. So we have four pins. I would just really want to know how they are actually connected. So let's connect one and the one across, which means they connect right away. So if you connect the one that's on the diagonal directions, they don't beep. But when you press, they beeps. So basically, the one across from each other is are connected. The one that's normally opens as the one who is like diagonal. So we just put this button here, like so, like in this direction, which means the resistor and the ground are connected. And when we press this button, we complete the circuit by sending the signal to the board. And then once this pin 40 here, the Android Things input, got the signal from our code from the pin 31, it will send out a voltage to light up this LED and you will complete the circuit by going back to the ground. So that's basically the logic of this circuit and you can just link it up followed by the pictures and basically I just followed exactly what they show besides my resistor is a bit long so I went from this a little bit later part of the positive and then connect it to the four pin push buttons so once you get this part set up then you can just start running your software now we are at the website, it's developer.android.com slash things slash SDK slash samples.html And this example we are looking at is the button example. So let's just click there and it takes us to the GitHub. Again, we can either download it by click the download zip button where we actually just can clone it. I already have the project open. So here is the code. I will explain to you what exactly it does. So at first, it will actually register a button. So this button is the get GPIO for button on my board, which is the pickle board. It will look for GPIO 174. So let's refer to that picture. So if you can see the GPIO 174 is the pin 40 on my board. And what that means, once this board get the signal from pin 40, you will pretend to be a key code, which is a space code. And then here in the code, it's listen to the events when the key code being pressed, which is space, then you will set the LED value to 2, which means it will turn on the LED. 
So here you can see member variable LED GPIO, then gonna be turned on and off. And of course the pin code for the LED is get GPIO for LED. It's actually looking for GPIO 34. You know, again, this picture, GPIO 34, which is pin 31 on my board. So this picture is very important could even download it and save it for your future references. And there is something you cannot actually just run this app right away because there's some permission issues. So what we actually going to do, we just going to build, click on build. And then we just going to click on build APK. So now the APK is being built. We can go to my folder. So here is the application. It's the app folder, build folder, outputs, APK, and there's an APK hyphen debug APK. So we actually need to install the APK manually to grant all the permission. Because for this example, it's actually using this manage input drivers, which does not really get us the permission by default. Uh, for Android things. We need to do a special installation in able to get that running. So you can see I already have it here. It's adb install hyphen g and then here you can just drag the debug apk here and press enter. Once that is installed we can start the activity by type adb shell an start com dot example dot android things dot button for slash dot uppercase button activity uppercase a to v i v i t y so here my screen just turned on with the app running and let's check out your board now I uploaded and installed my Android Things button APK to my Android Things device. And here, when I press the button, the LED light up. When I release it, it turns off. Put the thumbs up if your project worked as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to be able to use the YouTube creator space to make my videos. However, my subscriber base is not large enough to meet their requirements. I live in a very, very small apartment in order for me to set up everything that takes a long time. And after filming, I have to take them down. So if I get about 10,000 subscribers, then I can use the YouTube space, which means I will be able to make more videos in a shorter time. And so please subscribe. It will help me so much. And see you next video.